This is The Hustler's Corner. I feel honored to be in these situations that I could use my voice and, and do the things I do. Yeah, I'm inspired by, you know, life and all sorts of things. You can say something right now and it would inspire me to write a song or something to happen. You know, most kings just happen to be inspired by Bosky I drawn, you know, the drawing. And he had the, most young kings get their head cut off on the bottom. And I looked at that and I was like, it's powerful. You know, just the statement in itself, you know, lends itself for a song. The song starts inspired by Basquiat. My chariot's on fire. Everybody took shots, hit my body up, I'm tired. And then it's just, they build me up to break me down, to build me up again. They're like, hold, we need you back so we can kill your ass again. You know, it's like this thing, this love, hate thing that the world has with success, period. I walk in every room as myself. I don't walk in any room as anyone else. I'm not, I'm not cowering, I'm not speaking soft, I'm not, my voice doesn't change, it sounds exactly the same way. I'm walking as myself and proud, and I speak, and I speak for us. And that, and that, that gives me a joy. I guess I'm honored to be in, in those rooms. And so, yes. It's like, you know, don't listen to anyone. Everybody's scared. You know, everyone tells you how things worked out, but it worked out for you that way. And so don't listen to anyone because their experience is, is unique to who they are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then a lot of people will try to put their fears on you. You can't do that. No, you can't do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so they just project and they're putting things that they don't believe that they can do on you. And you may possibly can do it. Like my uncle, like he was telling me, like, I'm never going to. My uncle said I never sell a million records. I sold a million records like a million times. You know, so he was, I'm sure he, I'm his nephew. I know he, I, I don't think he meant any malice. He wanted the he best just, for you, but he, he just was didn't projecting believe. his fears right. and things that, like, are you crazy? How are you going to do that? How? You know, I'm, I'm sure there's things that I do now that he, he can't believe that I was able to accomplish. But he couldn't even see it at the time. Mm. Yeah. So he was just projecting, putting his fears on me. So the whole thing is just, you know. And always believe you're great, even before anybody else believes it. You know, um, it's an extension of my family. It's like the, the things that I do. I tell, I tell my, uh, my, uh, my family all the time. I tell my grandmother, my mom. You know, they, 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 they're proud. They're super proud and strong women. And they, they won't ask me for anything. And I say, man, you know, there are times where I don't want to get my picture taken. And I want to eat. And, and, you know, paparazzi, like, take photos in your face and screaming at you and like taking pictures and you can't take your kid to the park and I'm like those are the sort of things that give the reason why I'm okay with it and, and, and why I can cope and live with these things without you know a, much as a complaint it's the things that it allows me to 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 do the spaces that it affords me the the rooms I'm allowed to go in as myself it deals for the most part with success it deals with people who you started your life off with and what success does to them. People look at you strange saying you changed, like you worked that hard to stay the same, like you're doing all this for a reason. And what happens most of the time, people change. People change around you because they start treating you different because of your success. So you are changing. You don't change who you are, the core of who you are, the things you believe, the things you love, and the things you die for, and your principles. You don't change that, but you're gonna change who you are, you're gonna change, you know, you can't do the same things that you, you can't hang on the corner. Some people may not be comfortable with that. And then it deals with the other side of success, um, how people look at you when you're successful. Media medals, people sue you, settle, every step you take, they remind you, you get it. So no matter how far you are, you still have that stigma on you of where you come from when you walk inside the door. Even if you have a tuxedo on, it's like, oh yeah, that's the guy who used to be this and did that. Most kings get their head cut off, right? I mean, in war, battle, and in life. At the end of the day, you've achieved everything you want. You've made it to the top of the throne. And at the end of the day, you just get your head cut off. Do things that are true to you. You know, uh, you know most things that I'm involved with are an extension of being creative. You know, Rocco is a clothing company. You know, it's part of who you are. And hip hop is your attitude. And, what you're trying to expre express, how you dress. Um, so, you know, I love sports growing up. I grew up in a, in a household where sports was on 24 you know, 7. So these are all things that are, you know, are comfortable for me. You know, these are things that I like. 
So I would just say get involved in things that you love and also have, you know, have a standard for yourself and have some sort of integrity and try to, you know, find some sort of truth in what you're doing. What did you learn on the street? Because you talk about being 13 and selling crack. Did that teach you something of how to be a successful businessman or how we all yeah, are, yeah, are all common? the things, all the things that you apply in business, you know, you know, they say that he has great instincts, you know, but well on the streets, having great instincts can be the difference between life and death, not just losing a deal. Or incarceration. You know, yeah, or incarceration, you know, which is less than death, <laughs> right? And it's, it, which is, um, and having, being a person of high integrity, you know, people want to deal with you, mm. you know, in business, in, in the trust. Streets, you know, trust and honorable and, you know, a man of your word, you know, you know. All these things come to play in the business world. I'm not condoning uh, anything, any street uh, activity, but it's just, it's just the way it is. There's a, a redemptive power that making a choice has, you know, rather than feeling like you're at a effect to all the things that are happening. Make a choice, right? You just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide. And then from that point, the universe is going to get out your way. It's, like, it's water. It wants, to, it wants to move and go around stuff, you know. I, I realize that when, to, to have the level of success that I, I want to have, it's difficult to spread it out and do multiple things. It takes such a desperate, obsessive focus really got to focus with all of your fiber and all of your heart and all of your creativity. You are associated with a number of brands, HP, Coca-Cola, Budweiser. How do you decide who you want your name, your brand, your voice um, tied to and, and, and what companies you don't? Um, I try to, I try to, sometimes it's, it's, it's just more about relationships. I, I, I pretty much try to work with brands if, we, if there's some sort of partnership there. Uh, you know, I don't typically do a one-off endorsement deals. I, right. I, I've just never been interested in that. It's just more so if I can create some sort of partnership. You know, Coca-Cola was, was a partnership. You know, was a brand managers, you know, acted as at one time. Um, so I, I pretty much look for partners, you know, as opposed to one-off endorsement deals. Well, yeah, it seems like you insist on uh, some creative control, that you're not willing to just give the Jay-Z brand out or let people buy it from you. And yeah, for me, it's my life. It's who I am as a person. So I can't just let someone uh, have creative control of who I am. Sure. It's important. Best investment advice that you ever received. What was it? Do you remember? Whether it was in the market or just investing in life and in business. Yeah, I think just doing things that you believe in. You know, things that you understand. I think that's the best investment. I heard Warren Buffett say that just the other day. And I, I just innately felt that, you know, just invest in things that you understand. Speaking of Warren Buffett, you recently spent an afternoon with him uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. Went to lunch, sat down with him. Did it turn out that the two of you had more in common maybe than you thought? I think mo most people do. After a conversation, you realize that you have more in common than, you, than, than you know, things that are dissimilar. Yeah. What, did, what did you take away from that? What did you learn from sitting with him, and what do you think he might have gleaned from meeting with you? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea on his side. On my side, I, he's very sharp, you know. And, and, and again, he just affirmed to me that instincts is really important in business. You know, I, I didn't go to any proper business school or any, uh, read any super, uh, follow any manuals like the record business 101 or anything like that. I just pretty much followed my instincts. And he just reaffirmed that for me, that, you know, your instincts are very important to you. What about what you own? I, I, I read um, that your mother gave you a three-ring binder, and you would write your lyrics in it as a child, and you'd hide it under your bed so that no one would steal it. Are your words still your most valuable possession? Uh, yeah, because they caused all of this, you know, saved my life, you know, so. Saved your life? Absolutely. Why? Well, the things and activities that I, I was in, just as a broad statement, you know, everyone says that. If I wouldn't have made it here, I wouldn't be here. But no, really, you know, there, there was a, 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 you know, one of my friends who's like a dear friend of mine. Um, we would be together every single day. And if, if it wasn't for rap, if I wasn't taken away from, 
you know, the place I was, you know, I, he went to jail for 12 years. And we were together every single day. So I can't even imagine a, a circumstance where I wouldn't be with him. This is The Hustler's Corner.